What is up, everybody? Welcome into the first edition of this new video series we're going to be doing through the Fantasy Authority, where we're basically just going to be giving you some uh, some Devi players to be looking forward to and uh, keeping an eye on as the as the college season approaches. Uh, for the first one, we're going to be talking about Tamorian Terry, wide receiver out of Florida State, and I'm going to be joined by Steve Silvestri. You can find him on Twitter at sideline squib. He has some work on a, the podcast, the Sideline Squib Podcast, and he is currently writing and ranking over at Dynasty Happy Hour. Steve, how's it going, man? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Uh, super excited to join you on this inaugural, you know, whatever you want to call it, Devi Dip or uh, whatever you guys come up with the name there down in future. But we got a good one to start with, so I'm excited to dive in with we with you. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, we're we're. Uh... <laughs> This is the the second iteration of this of this intro because I neglected to hit the uh, the record button, but we were just getting into. Uh, you, you have a little news that's going to be coming out. Uh, you're going to be starting your own website, man. Tell us uh, what what that's going to be, where they can find it, and when uh, when we should be keeping an eye out for that. Yeah, so it looks like June 25th is going to be the official drop date. Uh, www.sidelinesquib.com will be official, live to the community. Um, we're going to have all sorts of things, rankings, uh, articles, blogs. Uh, we have some merchandise. We have a great group of team working behind the scenes to get some content dropped. So when it, so when the site goes live, there's already stuff in there for people to, to dive in, dig in, and kind of interact with us as well as us interact with the community. And then we're working on some coding for some DFS stuff right now as well. So uh, we got a lot going on behind the scenes. And and like I said, I like to thank Tyler at the Dynasty Happy Hour and Tim because they're kind of the ones that got us jump started as well. And and I like to still be part of that family and help rank for them over at DHH as well. So you're gonna be you're gonna continue to have the rankings with DHH and in addition to all the things you guys are gonna be doing at your side as well. Yeah, I believe I will still rank with them. Um, the writing of the articles will probably fall off. I'll probably do that for my own site. Um, right. But just to be part of the team, part of the family, I, I want to stick on a way to still be with the Dynasty Happy Hour because they're, they're kind of the ones that got us started. So I was talking to Tyler, and that kind of seems the best way if we're going to have similar things, you know, my one singular rankings of single QBs, 250 players should be – that should be the easiest way to kind of keep things <laughs> similar or differentiate between sites. I mean, I uh, love, love the Dynasty Happy Hour. I was really hoping I was going to be able to still contribute there as well with uh, with TFA because, like you said, that, that that's a great group of guys over there, and that's where I got you know my start as a, as a writer as well. So huge shout-out to uh, to the Dynasty Happy Hour and everyone that's still over there, still rocking and putting out putting out content. But the content we are here for tonight, like I said, we're going to be talking to Maury and Terry, redshirt junior uh, out of Florida State. Um, he was a, I think he was, I think 24-7 Sports had him as a four-star, but the, the composite rank had him as a three-star, like a top 30, top 50, depending on where you look in terms of wide receiver ranking. His, uh, his redshirt freshman year, he put up 35 for 744 and eight. And then follow that up uh, in 2019, really, really showed out, stepped up even more, went 60 for 11, 88, and 9. Uh, both of those years, he was over that 30% dominator rating. So there, there's a lot to like here, man. Tell me, um, you know, just give me your your quick little your quick little synopsis on him, the, the things you do and don't like from uh, from Terry. So – uh, I mean, his his biggest thing is he has the frame. You know, he's 6'4", 203 pounds, so he's that big body receiver that's going to be that possession receiver in the NFL. Um, much like what you talked on, him kind of staying in school, hopefully it helps him progress a little bit more because he does have some things to work on, I believe. He lets the ball travel too much into his body. He doesn't use his hands. Uh, I think that's a big knack on him, and he needs he really needs to focus on that coming into um, this this final year here at Florida State. Yeah, I mean, when you're talking someone with with his size and his frame, with the speed that he has too, like his speed is no joke, man. That's that's something that jumped out to me immediately when I was watching him. So he's lined up at the top of the screen here. Nothing crazy on on this one. I mean, something I would like to see, like you said, kind of lets that ball get into his body uh, a little too much, and you do want to see him work his way back to. Uh, to the quarterback there and kind of rounds it off at the top. But 
I mean, you're kind of just getting nitpicky at, at that point. Yeah, I think I think that play right there, that this is probably one of the better times that he uses his hands, at least in this clip that we've seen here, which is which isn't saying much. Um he uses that big frame a little bit to kind of block that kind of box that receiver out, but you're right. He he doesn't come back to the ball at all. He kind of stands there and let the ball travel to him, even though he uses his hands. When he's falling down to the ground there a little bit, I do like uh I would like to see him secure it. You know, he's kind of letting it leave it wide open. You know, if he just tucks it in, don't leave it out there. Don't let the receiver or the defenders closing in kind of get to the ball. But other than that, that's a, it's a decent route there. The next one. Whew. So, dude, I, like, I'm awful at – I'm awful at comparisons. Like, I don't like doing them. Like, I'm, I'm just not good at them. I don't like them at all because there's just so many different ways you can go with it. Like, a lot of people tend to do the thing where it's like you comp him at his ceiling – but there, there were some times when I was watching him, I kind of got like a Denzel Mims vibe just from the standpoint of like a bigger guy, athletic, he'll make some crazy catches and then you'll see things like this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which is absolutely insane. I mean, that's a that's a great throw by number one there. That's a must-catch ball from a receiver that wants to do anything. I mean, what it looks like, it's, it's minimal contact. Definitely going to be a lot more rough once it gets to the next level. I mean, that's a play you just, you have to make. And it looks like from from the first original view there, it looks like he, he should have enough because that, that safety cuts underneath to take the flat and man coverage. He should be able to, if he makes the catch, split that defender and at least go for a long gain here. Oh, for sure, man. Like like I said, like normally whenever you have guys that are this size too and you, you know what I mean, like you think of them being fast, like you typically don't see it, right? Because they tend to be like long striders and they just eat up a lot of space. But man, you see the speed with him. So if he catches this, like that could, e mm -hmm. he could easily be gone on that one. And this is just one of the things where I like. Mean, that's a perfectly placed ball right there. Yeah. Hit some square in the hands. That defender doesn't really seem to have a, have a hand in. Uh, gonna be at the bottom of the screen on this one. I just yeah, so, doesn't get there. Yeah, so this was another one. It was kind of kind of iffy for me. So it looks like it's a single move, kind of a deep post, and he starts on the outside of the far hash. Overall, it looks like a good route. He he has a he beat the defender. He has that separation. It almost looks like at the at the very end, you can kind of see in the left side of the screen here see the quarterback kind of jumping up into a somewhat collapsing pocket i think the quarterback just missed him there overall from what we can see it looks like a decent post route yeah the thing you'll you'll notice or the thing i noticed too is like it's it's hard to see because the, the scoreboard kind of kind of blocks it here but you will see him give a, a little shake to the outside and he's going to break back in like you said yeah. the post um the thing and he has another one later that's uh that's that's nasty um, whenever he does these little hesitation moves, you will see him never breaking stride. So, like, he hits that little move and he's just gone. So that's, like I said, that is something one of, like, his big his big calling card is going to be his his size and his speed. So this play, it looks like he definitely wasn't, wasn't expecting the ball. It was something, uh, looks like it was a design play to kind of hit that flat, whoever, whatever position that is coming out of the flat there. Um, you know, watch how he comes off the line, though. He, he never really turns around. He heads straight for the defensive back. You can kind of sell. He's not selling it in any way. He's going out to block is what right, I see right. from this play right here. So yep. um, it, depending on what the play was and kind of kind of how they wanted that ran, I guess he could have he could have kind of faked it off, you know, shown a little bit, sold it a little bit. There's not much out there. And with his speed and his size, the defender is going to have to take a step backwards before they make a move in. Yeah, absolutely, and you'll you'll see, especially from from this uh, from this game, he does not see anything even close to press coverage. I don't think uh, they're they're always playing off him and always giving him that cushion. I, I'm very surprised. Like even in this, I mean, we can we can you can talk as we go here. Man, there's a lot of zero coverage. This Wake Forest team is is leaving that middle of the field wide open, and they're just not capitalizing on it. This is just an absolute ugly play. Dude, this is also something that I that I've noticed from him as well. Is like he does not like going over the middle. There's a um, man. I think it was the game against Miami. I want to say where he's he's breaking in the middle and he like he gets his hand on the ball. He should catch it, but there's a safety closing in and he just short arms it, man. Like he he still gets <laughs> rocked and like th that that is something that I've noticed. And it's weird too because. Um, 
I've seen him be physical with blocking. Like he has that mentality. You would think with his size and his frame that, you know, he'd be a little, a little more physically competitive, show that, you know, that, that competitive strength. Um, And it's, that's just something where like, he's not going to be able to just line up on the outside in the NFL and just run goes and post, you know what I mean? So he's going to have to go across the middle. So that's something that as far as a uh, critique I would have for him, that I'd really like to see him clean up going into this year. Like, like we've said, obviously he's coming back to Florida state. Um, that That's just one of the things I've, uh, that I've noticed watching through some of his stuff. Yeah. And, and I know we jumped ahead a little bit here. I just want to touch on one thing I saw from that play that he dropped right by the end zone. I mean, that quarterback perfectly pump fakes. He gets drilled underneath. He pulls that, that underneath linebacker out a little bit. If you can kind of see right there, that pump yeah. fake pulls that line just to create that little bit of window. I mean, he he left a first and goal from the three on the table there. I mean, that's that's not a that's not a good a good ball there or a good uh a good possession. Nah, just a slight head turn. That's all it is. He he's scared of contact. Like you said, coming across the middle is a little bit. But then like like I said, that like you you'll see him like make contested plays too. It's 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 just a weird one with him where, you know, there's there's just some inconsistencies to his game that I'd I'd like to see him clean up. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I mean, these plays right here, like this one, um, obviously he comes off. There's not not much like that. That's a that's a good play. I don't, I don't have anything wrong with that. No. A little motion in, pick up a seven yard chunk right here. This is a broken play. He tries to get away. Gets held up. Ball thrown out of bounds. I think he moved and he tried to work downfield. Yeah, I think he tried to work downfield for his quarterback. So smart play both both from the quarterback and the wide receiver to try to try to make a move after the after the play broke down. This is a play I was talking about earlier where just uh love that play. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And this like this is these are the the ceiling kind of plays that get you really excited about Terry. Like I, I don't know if they ran the same play over and over in this game. I'm just seeing the clip. I didn't see the full game. But if you play that back just a little bit to the snap, like that safety is breaking up to the line of scrimmage on almost every play. You see him in the top right, probably a second from the corner, right next to the referee. He's yeah. going to break up. That's the help over the top. I don't know why they weren't running this play all game long if this is the defense they were running. I mean, he pulls, you know, he pulls his hips in very nice, a little slant and go. Uh, if he didn't stumble right there, I mean, this would have been a wide open touchdown. But even with it, he recovered well. He tracks the ball nicely, and that great body control and strong hands the whole way through that all through the contact falling to the ground. I mean, that's a that's that's what you're talking about right there. He makes these great great catches and contested catches, and then drops some of the wide open balls. Yeah, and this is the the play I was referring to earlier when I said about that just that slight that slight little move where he I mean obviously he stumbles a little bit but he never breaks stride he's able to get back to his speed and get up to that top speed he has really quickly so that's I mean like I said size the frame the like you can't teach speed especially at that size so there there's going to be a lot to to get excited about with him coming into that 2021 class where that is going to be another stacked wide receiver class. Yeah, and you slowing that down a little bit. I maybe maybe it wasn't a stumble. Maybe it was a fake triple move, almost like he was gonna like break it down and come back. I don't know. It, it's very very quick. Can't tell from that. But the, the, I'm watching it slower like that. It looks like almost it was a slant kind of flag, almost like he chopped his feet a little bit. Uh, no, that's a stumble. All right, <laughs> that's a stumble. Dude, speaking uh, speaking of stumble. Um, I was looking to see if there was any kind of verified 40 time on him in preparation for this podcast. And I was reading something about a, uh, a recruiting visit to, you know, one of those camps. And, um, I think there was, there was a team from, there were people from Auburn there, obviously Florida state as well. And he ran a laser timed four, three, nine in high school. And apparently he stumbled, uh, coming out of his, uh, coming out of that setup to like get into his, you know, what I mean, to get into it, coming out of the blocks, he stumbled. So he ran a a laser timed four three nine, and that was with stumbling coming out of the block. So this dude has that legit speed to go to go along with the frame that we've been talking about. Yeah, if he can put it together and uh, 
and kind of catch the ball. You know, uh, where, man, it might have been a couple weeks ago. I actually saw a breakdown of, I think it was Tyreek Hill working on an indoor facility, and they were just launching soccer balls, soccer balls at him. And then the coaches were breaking down. You know, he was running his routes, and the coaches were breaking down how it opens up his hands to catch the ball out in front because otherwise you're getting nailed with a soccer ball in the face. You know, that's a that's a drill that this kid needs to utilize. He needs to go out and he needs to get those strong hands and catch that ball out in front of him. If he can do that, he can put it together and he can he can find himself in a good spot. Um, you comped him to a to a last year's Denzel Mims. I was leaning kind of towards a big school AGG, um, kind of that big frame guy who can have those plays, kind of lanky, um, but also has his down things, and I think he might slip a little bit. So hopefully he puts it all together coming back to school, and hopefully that's uh, that's a good thing for him. Um, I don't know if you've been doing any sort of rankings yet with this class, but where do you have an idea at if you, if you haven't done any rankings with uh, the 2020? Because it's so it's super early with this. Um, do you have like maybe like tier wise or kind of like a, an area where you would rank him among the 2021? Uh, guys that are going to be coming in? Yeah, out of everyone, if you're going to talk uh, single QB um, rankings, he's he's probably somewhere near the – he's still currently where he's at. He's just based off of statistics, he's probably still be, uh, in the early stages of late first, early second, probably around 11 to 15, somewhere in there based off of where he's at now. You have some of the guys like uh, the LSU and Alabama, Jamar Chase, Devonta Smith, Waddle. They're all going to be kind of up there above him, I believe, as of at the preliminary stages. So I'd like to see where he, where he, what he does in his next season, if there is a season, hopefully. And uh, uh. yeah, don't jinx it, right? And uh, we'll see where he goes. But I, I'd say he's probably in that second tier of wide receivers for me right now. Uh, Steve, man, I, I appreciate you jumping on and joining me for this first one. Again, you can find him on Twitter at Sideline Squib. Make sure to keep an eye out for that website that is going to be launching in about dude. You got you got a month, man. That's yeah. uh that's gonna that's gonna be coming up, man. That's that's exciting. I'm I'm pumped for you guys. And again, the uh the podcast, check them out too at the sideline squib pod. Steve, thanks again, man. And uh we are gonna get out of here. Yeah, man. Later. Thanks for having me.